business and in this video we're going to do a tutorial on calibrating the work CNC machine. So the first thing we need to do is set up the two Y-axis actuators so they're in sync with each other. So we have a screwdriver that mechanically held in place so when you first build the machine these two may not be in line with each other. So to do this we just measure the distance between the Y-axis plate and the end plate and make a note of it. So in this case it's 26 0.5 mil, and then we need to go to the other one and measure the same distance. So in this one, it is exactly 25 mil. So this one is one mil too far this way. So what I need to do is move it back so it equals 25 mil. So I'm going to put the ruler there and just turn the coupler so it matches 25 mil, which it does there. I'll go back to this one and check. It is also 25 mil, which it is. So now I know these two are in sync with each other. Just a quick note on doing this, you must do it with the machine switched off, otherwise the monitors will lock and you won't be able to turn it by hand. And also, don't turn the coupler too quickly, as well as you can generate a back voltage into the controller and possibly damage it. You only really need to do this with a screwdriver machine, because the two are mechanically held in place on each side using the screw. With a belt drive, it should naturally find its in sync position. The next thing we need to calibrate is the X and Y and Z steps per millimeter. These are settings $100, $101, and $102 in the GRVL firmware. So, for a screwdriver machine or any screw actuator, these are set up as 200, 200, and 200. And then for a belt, they're 26.667. So, for the belt drive machine, it's 26.67 for $1.100, 26.667 for $1.101, and 200 for the screwdriver Z-axis. These values are using the mechanical specification of the screw and the belt of the pulleys. So in the manufacturing process, they may be slightly off for each machine and your individual machines. So what we need to do is calibrating by doing a cut and then measuring what the actual value should be. So how we will do this is we will cut 100 mil square out of this aluminium piece. Once it's cut, I'll take it off and then measure accurately using calipers what it actually cut on the X and Y axis and then use these values and a formula I'll show you later how to get the steps per millimetre. So you're probably wondering how I'm going to calibrate the Z axis. So to do this, I have perfectly zeroed the tip of the cutting bit with the surface of the material. I've done this manually, but a better method would be using a Z Pro, but you must make sure it's been accurately done. And then I've designed the job, so out of the 100 mil square we're cutting, we're going to cut one corner, a 5 mil pocket, and then once we've cut it, I'll take that off, measure the thickness of the material left, measure the thickness of the material that we started off with, and the difference between that is how deep it cut. And then using the same formula for the X and Y axis, we can calculate the steps per millimetre for the Z axis. So I've done other YouTube videos on setting up jobs on the Workbench CNC machine. So if you'd like to view that, the link will be in the description. So I'm going to skip past that on this step and just start the job right now. Welcome back. As you can see, we've now cut the 100mm test piece. Just a quick note on how we set up this job. On the first profile cut, we left a 0.3mm allowance around the edge, and then we set up a second jute profile cut to come through and take off this last bit of material. It gives us really nice edge finish, which makes measuring really nice and gives us accurate dimensions. Another thing to note is that I've also marked the X plus dimensions and the Y plus dimensions. So if you ever want to come back and measure this piece, I know what way it's orientated. So, in GRBL, you have three values we are looking to set in this video. So the X, Y, and Z, and these are the steps per millimeter. And in GRBL, these are labeled dollar one hundred, dollar one hundred and one, and dollar one hundred and two. At the moment, in our manual, these are just based on the specification of the screws and belt, so these are just theoretical values. So we're we'll labeled these 2H, 2H, 2H. And for the screwdriver machine, what we use to cut this, these are set as 200, 
200 and 200. Each had a belt drive. These top two would be set to 26.667 with the bottom one being left at 200. What we're trying to work out is the actual values based on our cut here. So this is dollar 100 actual we're going to label it. Dollar 101 actual and dollar 102 actual. I'm going to leave these question marks. These are what we're trying to find. Now, for our piece here, I set up the job so it's a 100 mil square piece. So for the measurements, we need to have our theoretical values, which is 100 mil for X and Y. And then for the Z, I set it to cut five mil deep pocket. So the theoretical value of that is five. And what we need to measure is our actual values. So X actual, Y actual, and Z actual. And these are what we're going to measure. Once we've measured these, we will then use this formula to work out our actual values. So this is dollar 100 actual. I will use the x axis as an example. Equals our x theoretical value times by our dollar 100 theoretical value divided by our x actual value and this will give us the x for example and then we change these values out to y and z so what we need to do next is measure these three values so to start off with we're going to measure the x so we get the piece of metal nice and square in the calipers so we've got 100.31 for the x Write that down. One hundred point three one. Next to measure the Y. So one hundred point three four. So let's write that down. So now I just need to measure the Z actual cut depth. Now, as you can remember earlier in the video, I um, said we'll measure this slightly differently. So first we'll measure the thickness of the material. So that's 100.1. And now we're gonna measure what material is left after we did the cut. That's 4.95. So now we do the 100.1. Minus 4.95, which is 5.15. So the 5.15 is the actual distance that we have cut there. Now we're going to use these values in our calculator to work out the actual values. So let's do the x. So we will do the theoretical value which is the dollar theoretical, which is 200, divided by the x actual, which is 100.31, times by the x theoretical, which is 100. So that gives us a value of 199.38. Next, we're going to do the same for the y axis. So 200 and 100 are exactly the same. Just need to change this bottom value. So it's 0.34. That's 199.32. So now I need to calculate the z-axis one. So use the same calculation as the x and y. So we will do the x, the dollar 100 theoretical, which is 200, divided by the x actual, or the, sorry, the z actual value, so 5.15 times by the z theoretical value. So that gives us steps per millimeter of 194.17.
Now, all you've got to do is connect your computer to the Gerbil controller, load up Universal G-Code Sender, type in dollar dollar, it'll bring up all your settings. And then you can set dollar one hundred, dollar one hundred and one, and dollar one hundred and two to these three values. So, for instance, you type in dollar one hundred equals ninety nine point three eight. Press enter and repeat the same for the bottom two. Once you've done that, you can then, if you like, repeat this again, recheck it, and the dimensions should be within 0.1 mil of what we set in our CAM program. Thanks for watching this video. Hope you found it helpful. If you have any questions or ideas for other videos, please leave a comment. And don't forget to like and subscribe to our channel.